Jean Negulesco, director of one of her first smash hit films, How to Marry a Millionaire. What was Marilyn Monroe like to work with? Well, as the director of the first intimate cinemascope picture, How to Marry a Millionaire, uh, we become friends and we had a problem, a big problem. So we, um, we had difficulties in doing this picture a little more than the usual ordinary picture. And we needed more cooperation from the actors than usually. I found Marlene Moreau alert, enthusiastic, and especially a uh, hunger for being, for, for, for knowledge, for being better. And this probably accounts for the uh, name she got of being late. But she wanted so much to be so perfect for it that she always retarded her arrival in front of the camera. The, the quality Marlene had is that she never felt that she was ready to face that camera. For that reason, she took two hours to fix her lips or an hour and a half to arrange her hair and change it and so on. But the moment she arrived in the front of the camera, there was, there was this romance, this love affair between her and the lens. And, uh, she gave something which nobody was able to, to, to catch during the life but the camera. You see, the camera to us is still that extraordinary mystery, which we never know what it will catch, because we all think we're always making great successes, you know, and until we get the film gets together, the camera has caught the success or the flap. As an actress, she always wanted to find a key, a simple answer to the character she had to portray. Um, and How to Marry a Millionaire, I made a sketch of her, and um, I show her the sketch, and she liked it, but she still was not convinced to find the key. So during the one scene we had, uh, when she was walking around telephoning, and I saw her trying more or less to uh, let's say, sell the sex of what everybody believes that Marlene Moreau is and believed in that was this symbol. I came to her and I said, Marlene, don't try to sell the sex. You are sex. You are the institution of sex. He says, the only key to this part is that you're blind as a bat without glasses. And her big blue eyes, you know, open and she says, that's the key. George Cukor, director of Something's Got to Give, the film from which he was fired last June. Robert Shackney asks the questions. Marilyn was an actress who uh, you'd have to produce her more than direct her. She, uh, if you let her have her own head, she did things that were quite original and quite enchanting. Is it true that uh Performers who are unusually good, who stand out, are frequently temperamental. Yes, but uh, so is uh, so everybody else, you know. They, uh, 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 the great thing, everybody has doubts and difficulties and, and fears, but the great one, the great thing is if you can overcome it and you can function in spite of them. Did Marilyn? Well, apparently not, poor darling. You see, what, uh, what happened to her? The, the, cle uh, the, the feeling now is that... Uh, Hollywood destroyed Marilyn Monroe and her innate creative abilities. Would well, you as a man who knows Hollywood say that there's substance to something like that? Well, I think that's, of course, an awful lot of nonsense. And I think people are, are jumping in with all kinds of sensational and rather silly statements, from my point of view, and big generalities. I suppose under the stress of emotion. I don't know why. And I'm surprised that rather intelligent people have said that. I don't know why really Hollywood destroyed her. Hollywood, in a sense, created her. Other pretty girls with good figures and platinum blonde hair did some of the th same things that Marilyn did, but when they did it, it was vulgar. When Marilyn did it, it had something. What was the difference? Well, uh, for, all her, for all her flash, Marilyn was a very distinguished creature in her own way. The, 
the, it, the, the clothes may have been absurd, but she had a distinguished mind, and she had real, she was unique. And she had a quality of excitement. That was, she was a real movie queen. Uh, just even when she was fully dressed with a big fur coat on and she ran across the street, across the screen, you followed her. There was this curious excitement with her. Uh, I, I would always have such, such pleasure in watching her work with these very, very high heels, which never seemed to interfere with her. And she'd run and she'd jump and there was always a, a, an enormous interest in that. You know, Mrs. Patrick Campbell said many years ago, Mrs. Patrick Campbell was a very witty woman, uh, who said about Tallulah Bankhead, she said, the, Tallul watching Tallulah on the stage was like watching somebody skate on very thin ice. And the secret of her success in England was that the English wanted to be there when she fell through. <laughs> well, one always felt that somehow about Marilyn.